Good evening. Hello, Mac and everybody. Mary here. Yeah. All right. We'll give everybody a minute to get on there. Yeah. Beautiful day today where we're at. Hope it's been a great day where you are today. Hey, Domingo. Hey, Domingo. Always good to see Domingo. Yeah. Johnny, Johnny Baker. Baker. Hey, brother. Krista Roberts. Hello, Krista. Joe right. and Sandy Collins. Hello. From Perry, South Carolina. Mary Jerry Lynn. Lynn. It's yeah. good to see you and Alan Stolze. Oh, yeah. Thank well, you. Well, I am a believer in Jesus Christ who struggled with drugs and alcohol, and that brought me into recovery and celebrate recovery, which has been the best years of my life since I've been in recovery. Mm -hmm. You know, it's been amazing that today I haven't found it necessary, or have I even wanted to or thought about going back to my past mm -hmm. life or my addictions, and that's because of what we're going to talk about tonight. Hello, I'm a believer in Jesus Christ, and I struggle with codependency, and my name is Mary. I'm glad to be here, too. If this is your first time to join us, we are so glad you're here. Please leave a comment so we can welcome you. You can find Celebrate, Reco uh, Celebrate Recovery near you by going to www.celebraterecovery.com. Click on the CR groups, and you can also find your state rep there. Our national team and our state reps are on here with us tonight, fielding your questions and prayer requests. You know, we are really excited to be able to come together this year uh, at our summit because there was one point this year we was wondering if we were even going to be able to do a summit. And for the first time in history, Celebrate Recovery is going live and online at the CRCR Summit, which stands for Ooh. the Celebrate Recovery Come Rejoice Summit, and the dates for that are going to be July 30th and 31st. You can register at CR Summits with a S, summits at the end, dot com, and that's $49 a person. You know, I heard somebody the other day say, well, you know, you're going to be doing it online. Can't you just do it for free? And you know, it's still a lot of expense involved in putting this on, but let me tell you what I thought of first of all. You know, for years, we've always taken a large crew from our Celebrate Recovery to the summit. And at the very minimum, we would spend $1,200 a person with travel oh, and yeah. rooms and summit costs and everything. That was a very minimum. So I'm looking at $49 thinking we have got a great deal this year. And this is really unlimited the amount of people that are going to get to come from our Celebrate Recovery this year. So $49 a piece. You just can't beat that. And I'll tell you, well, I guess you can beat that because if you buy five tickets, you're going to receive the sixth one free. So buy five, get one free. So out of six tickets, one of those is free. You know, in the past, we've um, bought all those leaders, and now I'm just, like I said, I can't wait to bring even more. We've worked really hard to make the Come Rejoice Summit online as inexpensive as we possibly can for everybody. So we're still working out a lot of the details, so stay tuned because almost every night you're going to hear something new about what we're going to do at the summit. Uh, it's going to be a one-of-a-kind type of event it's going to be over the top. Mm -hmm. It's going to be amazing. And you know what else is amazing? I'm sitting next to the woman that I love more than anybody else in this life except Jesus Christ. And today was her birthday. So I'm going to do something totally crazy tonight. You ready for me to do something crazy? Here we go. <laughs> Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Mary. Happy birthday to you. <laughs> All right, so people have been wanting me to sing on here for a long time. I sang. It's over with now. Yeah, I'm at 9,000 feet altitude. I'm almost out of breath right now. Thank Woo! you. Thank you for the birthday wishes. Y'all are so sweet. Uh, it's been a great day today. Something I just realized, I'm not looking at my day planner anymore. I've used a day planner to plan my life for 40 years, and I bought this cute little planner in January. See this? It says, coffee in one hand, confidence in the other. My name is printed at the bottom. I was so excited about writing all my important plans in it for 2020. Then the pandemic began. My day planner turned into canceling appointments, marking through events I had written down. All of a sudden, my schedule was wide open. 
Now I don't even look at my planner anymore. Most of the time when I wake up in the morning, I'm wondering what day is it today? <laughs> That's right. Now, 40 days later, I plan on my days around Sundays and Wednesdays. Sundays to watch several different churches, online services. And Wednesdays, I call it Wonder Filled Wednesdays. Because that's the day Mac and I get to speak to our CR Forever family on Facebook Live. In this time in our lives, we're using words we never used before. Mm. These are unprecedented times. Practice social distancing. Never said that before. <laughs> Stay home. Save a life. These words are a part of our everyday lives now. We are having to guard ourselves physically with social distancing. This verse keeps coming to my mind, Proverbs 4.23. Above all else, guard your heart, for it is the wellspring of life, mm -hmm. Proverbs 4.23. Last week, we went to Costco to get groceries. It was my first time to go wearing a mask in public, and it was so weird not being able to see people's faces. And I was so excited to just see some people. <laughs> Besides and, me. And, <laughs> <laughs> and I always like to smile at people, but I realized... They couldn't even see me smiling. We all looked like a bunch of zombies walking around. It was sad to me. In Costco's restroom, the sinks now have tall plastic guards to separate everybody. The checkout clerk was separated with a tall plastic guard. Everybody has their guard up. Mm. And at the same time, behind closed doors, while the pandemic is raging, so are addictions. Alcohol sales were up 75% in March, according to Nielsen. Online alcohol sales were up 243%. Weed sales are soaring across the country. Did you say weed sales? Yes. Yeah, we live in Colorado. There's plenty of weed sales. <laughs> Porn is capitalizing on the during the pandemic, $100 billion industry. People are eating more unhealthy foods and exercising less. According to the data from 68,000 fitness trackers, people are finding it difficult to get into an exercise routine at home or to even find the time while balancing work and child care duties. Americans are streaming more TV than ever before, sitting for hours binge watching. Gaming is booming. All new age live stream gaming platforms posted their best revenue generating was the month of March. The pandemic is weighing on people's mental health with mm -hmm. increased fear and stress. Domestic violence is skyrocketing. Many of you may know some of our family, Willie and Corey Robertson. Their home was the target of a drive-by shooting last Friday. It was very scary and dangerously close to hurting somebody. Mm. We're so thankful they're safe and the gunman was caught and in custody. Now listen carefully to this. On April 14th, the New York governor proclaimed, God did not stop the spread of the virus. We did. Officials of the CDC said, our only hope is in a vaccine. Here's what I have to say about that. Here's the truth. Our hope, which is the only hope that is secure, is found in Jesus Christ. Amen. Friends, we are in a spiritual war. God is in control. No human is in control of the pandemic. However, God is using people for good in many ways throughout mm. this time. Are any of you waking up during the middle of the night and can't sleep? I know I am. If I wake up, then I know it's time for me to pray. The national team doesn't talk ahead of time what each of us is going to share the night we speak. We all speak on what God places on each of our hearts. And last night, hearing Rodney and Carol speak on the condition of our hearts mm. was so good. Mac and I looked at each other saying, we are on the same wavelength with Rodney and Carol. God wants us to pay attention to the health of our hearts. Amen. So back to Proverbs 4.23. Above all else, guard your heart, for it is the wellspring of life. The Hebrew word for guard is natsar, which means to keep, observe, guard with faithfulness, be a watchman. Watchmen in the Bible guarded the cities. They didn't wait for the enemy to attack. They would take action by alerting the people as soon as they knew there was a threat. Proverbs 4.23 says, Everything we do flows from what's inside our hearts. Mm. If we don't set a guard, a watchman over our hearts, we become exhausted and depleted from the intrusive, worrisome thoughts that come in our minds. 
And then you know what? It's easy for the enemy to invade our minds and trample all over us, causing more distress. Mm -hmm. You know, for the first time in my life, we've got orders now from our government that says, stay at home. If you want this country to be better, if you want this country to get better, you need to stay in home all the way through this pandemic. That is, unless you were deemed as essential. You know, for those of us who were told to stay home, we were labeled as non-essential. And, you know, I got to thinking about that, and that can really bring on some negative emotions in our heads. At least it can in mine. You know, there's some people or some businesses that are essential, and then there are some that are not, that are not that important. People that they can really do without, or at least that's what it sounds like to me when I hear the words essential or non-essential. You know, many of us who are in recovery grew up with that negative kind of message going around in our head for years, right? We were told, you'll never amount to anything. You're worthless, you know, and and we heard those messages for a lot of our life. And then all of a sudden, we get into this relationship with Jesus and into recovery, into celebrate recovery, and the message changes, we find our true identity as a part of the body of our of Jesus Christ, our Savior. Did you hear that? Mm-hmm. We find our true identity, who we were made to be in the, the body of Christ as a part of that body. You know, in the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 12, the church, which is us, the church is meeting tonight. Mm-hmm. The church is compared to the body which has many parts and different functions, if it's going to operate correctly. And Paul shares this story with us, and it's really an engaging conversation that the body is having with itself among different parts of the body. And the foot would say to the hand, hey hand, you know what? I'm not a hand, so I guess I'm just worthless. (laughs) And then the ear would say to the eye, hey, eye, I'm not a, I'm not an eye, so I guess I'm not part of the body. The point being, Paul says, no, you're all part of the body. It takes many parts for this body to function correctly, just like it takes our bodies to function correctly. And it goes on to say that the body really isn't a body unless there is more parts, more than just one part. Paul ends the, in verse 22 by saying this, In fact, we cannot get along without the parts of the body that seem to be the weakest or the non-essential. Did you hear that? In fact, we can't get along without the parts of the body that seem to be weakest or non-essential. The NIV translation translates it like this. On the contrary, those parts of the body that seem to be weaker or non-essential are indispensable. Mm -hmm. Well, I, I don't know about you, but that was really good news when I heard that. You see, 32 years ago, I came into a relationship with Jesus Christ, and I came into a church family that really loved me. And in this church family, there were a lot of biblical scholars, people, men and women that I looked up to. And I I thought, man, I want to be like them. I don't know if I'll ever fit in. Then I read this verse and I realized something. They, the biblical scholars, could not do without this recovering drug addict because I was now deemed essential by my Savior, Jesus Christ. So I now to this church family, was indispensable. Well, fast forward 32 years, and I find myself now, I've been told, Mac, you're not essential. You just stay at home. Fortunately, during the last 32 years, I've been given some really essential recovery tools, tools that I can't do without. Tools that to this day, I'm going to make sure I have on me all the time. So with this time in history, each one of us needs to make a list. And that list is going to include things we cannot live without. You know, it reminds me a lot of camping. That's something that 
Mary and I love to do. It's one of our greatest pleasures on earth is camping, just going out in the wilderness and building a campfire outside and eating food outside that you cook on that campfire. And, and you know, I, I love it because when Mary and I go camping, it's like we're closer to God than ever. When you look up and see that Milky Way in the sky, you know, being out in God's creation, sometimes without even seeing somebody for two or three days. Well, when we go on these camping trips, here's one thing we know. We know that we have to pack the things that are going to be essential to making that trip enjoyable, to making that trip a success. But it wasn't always like that. You know, when we were younger, we loved to go camping then, too. It's been a part of our marriage ever since the day we got married. And when we were younger, there were things that seemed to be essential that once we got on the trip really didn't seem to be that essential. I'll never forget the time we were we were going to float down the Buffalo River in northwest Arkansas, and we were going to be on the river for three days. That means we had to take everything that we thought was essential, pack it in our canoe, and then float down river with us because we weren't going to see anybody else where we could get out and buy anything the whole time we were on that river. You know, if that canoe was to turn over, we would learn, lose those things that we thought were essential. So here's what I know. We had to pack very carefully. Did we, Mary? Yes, yes. There was a lot of discussion between Mac and me. What was essential and what wasn't essential? And now when I share this, I want you to know this trip was before we were in recovery. Pre-recovery, remember that. <laughs> so here's what happened. I'm having to move over to the side a little bit more because the sun's shining in through our mobile office here. On day three, the only food we had left was cornmeal. So I made some hot water corn patties for our last day's meal. We had a full day of canoeing to get to where our shuttle was. It was a tough day with no snacks or other food, just a few corn patties for one meal. And all that left was left to drink was beer. Ugh. Our trip became miserable because what Mac thought was essential took up a lot of space in our ice chest that could have been food. I guess Mac thought that was essential. I ended up drinking the river water because I never did like beer. <laughs> <laughs> you, know, you know, it's amazing how once you get into recovery and then look back on some of the stupidity, and that's all it could be. It was just stupid to pack that kind of stuff in an ice chest when you could have been packing food. But you look back on that, and in John chapter 1, Big John, that's the John up in the front of the book, it says, you know, the light looks in the darkness and sees exactly what was what that was about. But the darkness looks into the light and can't understand it. You know, once you get in the light, you look back and see exactly how foolish some of those decisions you made were. So that's what we really want to talk about or focus on tonight is what's essential for your recovery? Mm -hmm. What's essential for your relationship with Jesus Christ to flourish during this pandemic? That's right. I said that during this pandemic, we say that you can thrive, not just survive. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, let's face it, Mary and I have talked to a lot of people in the past few weeks who are really experiencing the most difficult time in their lives, some struggles that they never thought that they would encounter. And being labeled non-essential, being told to stay home, being told we don't want to see you is not helping any. Man, that doesn't feel good, does it? No, it doesn't feel good to be told you're non-essential. We don't want to see you. You know, if you haven't gone through any struggles in this pandemic, I'd, I'd love for you to check your pulse right now because I don't know if you're alive. You know, I believe every one of us, I know we have struggled and we're going to struggle if we haven't packed the essentials or we forget to look at our essentials at any time during the week. You know, if you haven't packed the right things, this is really going to be a rough trip. So we would like to give you five of our top five essentials to pack. You know, Peter, I love Peter. He was the one that would just come out with things sometimes when you think, man, did he just say that? But Peter would tell us the first thing we would need to pack when we're packing for this trip. And it's found in 2 Peter 3.11, where it says this, since everything here today might well be gone tomorrow. Sound familiar? Since everything here today might be well be gone tomorrow, 
Do you see how essential it is to live a holy life? You know, I saw a, a, a list that was written out recently on the eight most meaningful things in life. If you want meaning in your life, here's a list of eight things. And the very last thing that was listed on that list was faith. I couldn't believe it because that was in direct opposition of what we believe. Because we believe the first thing you need to pack as an essential during this trip is going to be faith. So the number one thing on our top five list to pack is your faith. Because faith is what will help you do what Peter said. And Peter said, you're going to have to live a holy life. And it's only because of my faith in Jesus Christ and knowing that he already paid the price for me and that he sees me as holy that I can live a holy life. You know, according to this verse, then it's going to be vital to keep growing in line with God's purposes for our life. And that one of those purposes is holy. I call you to be holy. So our faith in Jesus Christ and what he did for us makes that essential, the number one on our list. And Mary, there's some very specific things we do to strengthen our faith, right? Yes, we take daily actions to live a holy life. When we wake up each day, we ask ourselves, what can I do to become more like Jesus? We spend quite time alone with God, reading and studying our Bibles and praying to God we write in our journals, which reminds me of when I first heard about the 12 steps. And when I got to step four, make a searching and fearless moral inventory. The first time I heard those words, I was full <laughs> of fear, <laughs> thinking, I don't want to write an inventory of all the bad that's happened in my life and all the causes and its effects. I didn't realize at the time that I would be writing down the good too. It was definitely a process. And it's healing for me as time goes on to go back and read in my old journal of mm -hmm. mine to see how much I've grown and healed. Then also another daily action we take, as we have said in previous Facebook Lives, we write down a verse that speaks to us on a three by five card and we carry it with us each day. And we're going to keep telling everybody about that. Whoever will listen, we're going to tell them about that little habit because that was a good habit for mm -hmm. us. Number two. The number two essential that we have packed is meaningful relationships, meaningful relationships. You might be thinking, but Mac, have you not heard we're not supposed to be around other people right now? I know that. But listen, you know, in my past life, nothing, nothing would get in the way of me feeding my addiction. I remember telling my sponsor one time that I couldn't make a meeting one night. And he looked at me and said this. He said, Let's see, before you got into recovery, you would go across the state or even to the next state to get what you needed to feed your addiction. And now that you're in recovery, you're telling me that you can't get across town to make it to a meeting? He said, I'm not buying that. I'll see you at the meeting. <laughs> Guess what? I was at that meeting that night. So here's what I'm assuming. I'm assuming if relationships mean something to you, which they should, that you can still pick up the telephone. Mm -hmm. I'm assuming you can get on Zoom calls for an open share meeting. Or you can still write an email or a text. Or how about this? You could just go totally crazy and write a handwritten letter to somebody and put it <laughs> in the mailbox. Let me tell you what. If somebody gets a hand, yeah, when we get a handwritten letter, we're like, whoa, all the other mail goes out the window. We go, look at this. Somebody wrote a letter. Let's see what it says. Somebody would really enjoy that. You can get on Facebook Live every night of the week. We're on here every night of the week, either answering questions or doing what we're doing tonight. We love getting to be with our Celebrate Recovery family. You know, and, and like Mary mentioned this earlier, you can attend as many Sunday morning services as you possibly can, as you want to. Right now, this is our personal best right now. During the pandemic, this is the most ever in our life. We have attended seven different worship services on Sunday at seven different churches. I don't think we'll ever top that, but you can do that every week. And to me right now, relationships are becoming more meaningful than ever. We miss our grandkids so much, so we get to Zoom with them. So we so appreciate whatever we can do to see their sweet faces 
even if it's just a photo or a video of them doing something. Mm -hmm. Our daughter, Callie, who lives an hour and a half away, has started coming over once a week for us. So we visit with one another, social distancing, of course, as we stay outside. Today, they came over for my birthday and it filled my heart watching the grandkids fish and paddleboard on our little pond. And one of our friends made me a homemade birthday cake. That meant so much to me as it's quite a drive to come out to our house and just drop off something at the front door. It was pretty cool because they put a big sign that said, Happy Birthday, Mary, and then had their names, uh, mm -hmm. Ryan Kirk, under that. And it was just so cool to see that because it, it reminded us we still are yes. connected. And you know what? They took the opportunity to do number three. Number three, I said number three, but it's really number three. Number three <laughs> is serve others. That's the next essential we need to pack when we're going on this trip of life. You know, there are things you can do during this time of quarantine that can be a service to others. But here's the catch. You have to pay attention and you have to be looking for these ways when they pop up. You might miss them. You know, one of our Facebook meetings here about a week or so ago, Roger and Sarah challenged us to be servants during this time of isolation. I was like, wow. That is a pretty cool challenge, actually. And that means we're going to be ready when the opportunity arises. You know, about two weeks ago on Sunday night, uh, our neighbor called. And he happens, him and his wife happen to be out of the country right now. They can't get back in the country, actually. <clears throat> and he asked us if we would go check on his house because it seems like he'd lost power. None of his smart devices were responding when he tried to check in or connect with him. So we told him, yeah, we'll be glad to go over there. So we knew that he had power because when we was going over there, we saw that the porch lights were still on. So we went over there thinking we were going to go probably reset his modem. Everything would start talking to each other and then it'd be fine. Well, I was checking his modem. Mary walked into the kitchen and immediately with alarm in her voice said, hey, Mac, come here, come here right now. And I was like, what? And she goes, there's way bigger problems than that computer coming on right now, I promise you. So I went over there and saw what she saw where she was standing. There was water everywhere. Mm -hmm. At some point during this time of disconnection, the power had gone off and all the water lines froze and broke. And now with the warmer temperatures, the water was flooding everywhere in that house. Well, just to make a long story short, our neighbor is still out of the country. So what we've been doing, starting from that night, and it was almost dark that night, so it wasn't convenient, but starting that night, I went over and got my wet vac and fans. We started vacuuming up all the waters, placing fans all around the house and in the crawl space. And since then, we've been letting in the, the plumbers and people to work on the boiler, all the people that needed, the essential people that needed to get in and work on this house. You know, this was not something we planned to do, but it was an opportunity of service that God allowed us to be a part of. Number four, be aware of your actions. In other words, take a daily inventory and when you're wrong, promptly admit it. This is going to be a really big essential to be aware of your actions. You know, in this time of being ordered to stay at home and in close proximity with people we love the most, we can still get on each other's nerves. You know, there's no one I would rather spend my time with than Mary. For 30 years, our cabinet shop was right next door to our house. We were around each other all the time. Then 10 years ago, we sold that business, moved to Colorado to get more involved in recovery work. Now we're together even more. But there's something different about this pandemic and being together all the time. I can't quite figure out what it is. We love being together. We really do. But we also have come to the realization that we need a little space from time to time. I have a small cabinet shop out on our property. We call it the barn. And it's a place where I can go work on projects. And Mary has been <laughs> become quite the diplomat when it comes to protecting her time to be alone. And at first, I didn't even realize what she was doing. I have to say something right here about the barn. During the pandemic, I've started feeling that I need a little time to myself. So I would say to Mac, don't you need to go down to the barn to work on a project? I didn't tell him I needed some space at the time. Then I started coming up with more things I needed him to work on at the barn. Mac always loves going to the barn, so he thought this is a great idea, not realizing I wanted some space. 
I finally told him one day and we laughed about it. So now if she says go to the barn, I know what that means. <laughs> you know, I realize no matter how much we love each other, having some alone time is a good thing. Giving someone you love a little space can actually help your relationship grow stronger. 2,000 years ago, a Roman poet wrote words that most of us have heard. Absence makes the heart grow fonder. Number five. Number five essential. Do something where you experience the awe and wonder of God. Do something where you experience awe and wonder. You know, we mentioned earlier how much we love to go camping. Well, the last thing I heard... The outdoors is still open. So get outside and and look at some of God's creation. You know, experiencing his creation is something that should never grow old to us, whether it's the beauty of a mountain or, or, or a lake, a rolling hill, a dirt road through the forest, a cloud going across the sky, deer in a field, a herd of elk, or even your pets at home. You know, when I realize all those things I just listed, and that's a very short list, all those things I just listed are things I cannot create. They were created for me and for you. And since my father is the one that created those, that should leave me in awe and wonder because he created those for me. He created those things for us. Do something that leaves you in awe and wonder. So the five essentials we're going to pack are faith, meaningful relationships, serve others, be aware of your actions, and do something where you experience awe and wonder. I love the way Roger Stanton wrote it on the CR Facebook post on Monday, Philippians 4, 7. And the peace of God, that peace which reassures the heart, that peace which transcends all understanding, that peace which stands guard over your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus, that peace is yours and mine. Mm. If you are ready to guard your heart above all else, write in the comments, guard my heart. That's what we're going to do. We're going to guard our hearts during this time. And I want to close with a blessing over you. I love to do that. Children of God, may the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face towards you and give you peace. Father, thank you that nothing we struggle with is impossible to heal. There are many who are struggling in addiction, addictions right now. We pray they will reach out to somebody who they can share with and receive encouragement and support. May their chains of hurts, hangups, and habits be broken so they can experience the peace that passes all understanding found only in Christ Jesus. Thank you, Father that you are with us, you are for us, you are not against us, and you will never leave us. We pray this in your son's name, the name above all names. Amen Jesus, and amen. amen. Hey, look, guys, thank you for being here. Uh, we just want to tell you that we love being with you. We love being part of this Celebrate Recovery family. And we look forward to the day we get to see you on the road again. It's not going to be that much longer. We're going to start seeing each other. We love you. I hope you have a great weekend. Tomorrow night, we have our singing sister. You thought my singing was something. If you haven't heard Cheryl Luke, you're going to have to be there to hear her niece tomorrow. Them, yes. They are like two angels singing. So we look forward to seeing you guys tomorrow night. Have a great evening.